Hi guys and girls, welcome back to Watch Your Time. Thanks for tuning back in. Thanks for coming back to see me. I'm really pleased you've done so. And I'm exceptionally, exceptionally pleased about to bring you this Sam Martin. This is one that's been on my list for a little while. It took me a little while to get it. Bought it during the sale. It's now here. It's the SN0129G. They offer this in three different color variations or dial options. They've got the Aventurine. They've got one like a lapis. Let me know what it's called in a marble. For me, the Aventurine had to be the one, to be honest. I just, Aventurine dials have become very, very popular in the last sort of few months. Um, and I just think there's something about them. The way they sparkle, they look like the sky at night, the stars glistening. Um, and uh, it's coupled with the fact that San Martin now, they are just sort of going to another level with their sort of finishing, their details, their everything. So this dial coupled with that, for me, I felt like this could be one of those watches where... A three hundred and fifty dollar watch to compete with the likes of Rolex, Grand Seiko, Omega, so on. Could that be the case? Because this looks like an unreal offering, and from a brand that is really going from strength to strength. They are really trying to push out more sort of designs nowadays, not just copy and paste. They really are trying to move into that sort of micro brand space. How have they done though? Is it as good as it looks? I'll stop going on because it's about that time. You want to see the watch, then yeah. So if you like the watch, please use the link in the description. It's an affiliate link, just that it doesn't cost you anymore. But um, yeah, I'm going to stop going on. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video. It's about that time to get the camera turned around and get on with it. Hi right, guys, so this is the watch. This is the case it comes in. Uh, you'll see the watch there. This is the outer box. So you've got a warranty card, um, screwdriver. You've got a tool to obviously size the watch. Warranty card's always signed, um, so yeah, it's all good. And that's the outer cardboard box. And then what you're left with inside that is this leverette sort of travel case, which is good to be able to use again. Let me just get the watch out. Comes on a like sort of velvet cushion, which is also the in, it, they, they've, they've uh, done the insiders like that as well. So I've taken out two links for it to fit my wrist. And yeah, that's the rest, the rest of the inside. That is a green in color. Um, I quite like when they when these companies give us packages that we can keep using. Uh, it's good for the environment, and also it's good to just be able to keep using it and keep using it. I did take the crown out in preparation for the review, so it was in a sort of good position. But just take a look at that dial, guys. Yeah, I agree. It could do a bit more AR coating, perhaps, but I think it's a really stunning piece. I have nothing else like this in my collection. So uh, this is the SN0129G. There's also a BGMT, so I'm just, but I'm just going to call it for all intents and purposes, the SN0129G. Inside this watch, given this is a GMT, it's running the Seiko NH34 movement. I'll bring some information up about that movement now. What can I say about these movements, guys? That's not been already said. I know the 9075 has become a lot more desirable because they say it's a true GMT movement, but the Seiko NH34 was one that came out sort of a couple of years ago now. Um, and it gave people a really reliable GMT automatic movement. 24 joules, 21,600 beats per hour, 41 hour power reserve. And they just run and run. Um, so yeah, rugged, reliable. Also has a 4R34 win in a Seiko watch. The construction of the watch, aside from the crystal on the front, is all 316L stainless steel. So you'll be able to take a good look, guys, at the transitions there. From the polish to brush surfaces as the case. Bezel, crown, bracelet, solid end links, uh, fully milled clasp with the on the fly adjust that they're now using pretty much all the time now. Um, all 316L stainless steel, mixture of brushing and polishing. And the polishing and the finishing on San Martin watches really is just getting out of this world, really, especially for the price. So, yeah, 316L stainless steel, all, all apart from the crystal, obviously. The case thickness of the watch is 13.5 millimeters the case diameter i normally measure from the eight to two o'clock position it was coming at a 39.7 millimeters and when you go include the crown at the three it was coming in at 42.1 millimeters the lug width on this is 20 that does taper down to 16 and back up to 18.5 mil at the clasp and the lug to lug tip to tip of the watch is a true lug to lug given it's got female end links to the center link and it's coming at a 46.5 millimeters. So I think that's extremely good proportions there, guys. Um, I really do I think it works really, really well. The bezel is a 24 hour fixed bezel just to enable you to set a second time 
which I will talk about when I when I look at the dial in a bit more detail. The crown is screwed down, situated at three o'clock position, nicely uh, signed with San Martin. The case back, I've not showed you, is a sterile screw down case back. Maybe that could have been a bit signed, but it's not. Um, but nicely finished nonetheless. The, the bracelet has got a good bit of tape on it. Like I said, it goes down from 20 to 16. Uh, brushed on the tops, polished at the side, screw pins, just keeping it secure. Like I said, you've got the fully milled clasp, set, safe double safety pushes, fully milled, and you've got obviously lots and lots of micro adjust on that clasp. So if you want to, I've got it all the way out now. If I push it back in, then you'll see it goes, probably gives you, I would say, for 8 mil, and then if you want to press that, pull it out, there you go. And obviously, I norm what I normally do when I put it on the wrist, I put it on as, as large as big as possible because it's quite easy just to push these in when you're wearing it just to the sort of desired sort of um, size. So there we are. Uh, the crystal covering the dial is a sapphire crystal, which is obviously nice to see, obviously given its scratch resistance and stuff. Um, could do a little bit more AR coating. There seems to be lots of blue on there. Maybe it's because of the domage on there that's making it sometimes quite reflective. But um, there we are. Um, the water resistance, excuse me, is sighted as being 100 meters, and you'll see that down at the six. So that'll give you 10 atmospheres of water resistance. And the weight will appear in the top right is 143.7 grams with those two links removed. With those two links back in, you're probably looking at approximately 155, 160 grams. So decent about a amount of heft for a watch that isn't huge. Um, but there we go. But let's have a look at the dial now, guys, in a bit more detail because the dial on this. In my opinion, it's stunning. It's an adventuring dial. They have got a couple of other alternatives to choose from. But um, I would definitely, definitely recommend this. I think it's it's really, really stunning. You've got a rehout with a minute track just outside of the, the dial itself. Inside that, you've got applied indices everywhere except for the 3 o'clock position where you've got the date window, which is nicely cut out, high polished as well. You've got battens everywhere else. You've got San Martin logo applied just below the baton at the 12 o'clock position. Uh, the battens are done really, really well. The hands and indices are exceptionally well finished, high polished, good proportions. Um, and like I said, just another statement from San Martin really in terms of what they're actually able to sort of produce at their factory now, the warehouse. And they've got their own um, factory, so you can see they're just banging out some excellent stuff. You've got GMT automatic, 100 meters equals 330 feet, just above the baton at the 6. As I said, date windows at the 3 o'clock position. The dial is just unbelievable. It's quite black, but in some lights it does look a bit blue because of the blue IR coating. You've got GMT written on the dial in, in red, and you've got the red sec um, GMT hand, which uh, we'll talk about in a few moments. I just think the proportions on this are done so, so well. Really, really nice to look at. I've been transfixed by it, guys. It's, it takes a lot to really um, get me going now with watches because I've seen so many of them. But this one really has sort of captured the imagination. Just looks like the stars at night with the dial. It has got loom, so I'll bring the loom up now. Very good loom. I'm sure you're not surprised given that San Martin, they sort of don't mess about, do they? They don't really cut corners on a lot of stuff. And they definitely haven't done it with the loom. The loom is very, very good. Uh, making this really a sort of guard of watch, sport, dressy guard of piece. The loom is as good as goes and goes. Obviously, I've quickened it up just to, yeah, so you ain't going to watch it for so, for the whole time I was doing it. But there you go. Like inside, I've said before, it's running the Seiko N34. We I left the crown out already. So if we turn it away from you, you'll hear it's charging it. If we take it all the way out, it will hack. And you'll see the second hand just comes to a stop over there. You put it back out in the crown, obviously the crown. Uh, is now all the way in, not screwed up, but you'll see the second hand moving. Got a red accent at the end of the second hand again, which is nice with the red sort of contrast they've been offering with the GMT hand writing and then the second hand. Uh, if we take it out to the first position, so we turn it towards you, you can change the date, turn it away from you, you can move the GMT hand. Um, and that's, that's that, guys. So like I said, with the GMT hand, so say, for instance, now, uh, say 12 minutes past 8, yeah? So then what, what I would do, if I take the crown out again, go out to the first position, if I move it away from me, that's, that's. so now this is telling me it's, say, 
almost so it's, say it's ten past four in the afternoon somewhere else. So you could set that as another time zone. What's pretty cool is once you've set it, you put it back in, you screw it all up. Even when next time you set the time, the time difference between your time and the time in that other country will still remain the same, won't it? So then you can just keep using the watch like that. And that's kind of what I was going to do with it personally, because I've got friends. Well, one of my best friends lives in Auckland, in New Zealand, so I was going to set it to that time. Or one of my really good friends, again, in Melbourne, Australia. So I was going to do that just to leave it as those sort of time zones. So yeah, it works really well. But um, yeah, that's the movement, guys. That's the dial. That's the thing going on there. Let me just pop it on the wrist quickly. Give you an idea of what it's not on my wrist. And like I just said, I just pushed, as I've had it on the wrist, I pushed it in just to make it a bit tighter with the on the fly adjust clasp. But I think this watch is truly stunning, guys. Um, yeah. What do you think, guys? What are you thinking of it so far? There we are. Okay, so guys and girls, that will now take me on to what I think is pants and pucker about the watch. If you've ever watched before, you'll know I always start with pants. I like to go on a high with pucker. So what I think is pants about the watch. It's not an awful lot. I, I think the AR coating, it looks like they've put an awful lot on, given how many blue hues is coming off it. So I'm not going to mention that. One thing I'm going to mention is the date colour. If it was white, uh, black with white writing, given you've got white writing on the dial, I think that would work a lot better because it wouldn't look so, it wouldn't sort of stand out quite so much. But so that's it, really. I think this is an exceptional watch. It's sort of this um, one I was looking forward to getting in, and it hasn't failed to to, to um, live up to the expectations. And that's the only thing I'll mention is the date color. What I think is pucker. Strap yourself in. There's a lot more. I'll go with the dial. I think that dial is stunning. Um, yeah, really, really beautiful dial. The hands and indices, like I said, I think they're just really well finished. If you look at them in, they're like they're high polished. The way they're applied, everything else, really, really well done. The loom, as I've mentioned, like the loom being so good does make this a real good sporty guard of piece. One you could use for lots of different occasions. As I said, 20 mil lug whip, so you could put it on another strap quite easily. The case shape, um, it's obviously taken some design cues or inspiration from companies like Grand Seiko and stuff. And they've done it really well. You can see the sort of angles. I like the angle where we're twisting at the lugs. Got the chamfered edge going through. I just like the way it looks. I think they've done an exceptional job with it, really. The size, like I said, I think the size of the watch, the proportions of the watch are really, really well done. Um, 39, or yeah, 39.7 and 46.5 lug to lug. So yeah, very compact watch. And you'd have seen that on my wrist as well. The clasp, fully milled. It's nice having that on the fly adjust as well. I do like that. It's becoming sort of commonplace. They have executed it well. The finishing... As I was sort of alluding to before, when you look at the transitions, how sharp they are from the polish to brush surfaces, it's quite unbelievable because the brushing's done so well. It's more of a satiny brush you get on these watches to those real polished surfaces. I think they've done it exceptionally well. And the general look, this isn't going to be for everyone, guys. It really isn't. I'm under no illusions about that. But I think this is a stunning watch. I think it generally looks amazing. Um, and it's, I've had nothing like this in my collection. So, yeah. So let me just summarize what I think is pucker. I'll go with the dial, hands and indices, loom, case shape, size, class, finishing, and general look at a watch. And that'll take me on to, would I recommend a watch? Uh, I mean, when, when I'm saying as many things as I'm saying for pucker, it kind of goes about saying, you kind of probably know what's coming next. Yes, of course, I'd have to recommend this watch, guys. I think it's an absolute belter. And it's not another sign of what Sam Martin are doing now. They really are. They have become a sort of standalone micro brand, haven't they? They're becoming a real exceptional brand. They cut their teeth with homage watches. They also do more original pieces. Like I said, a couple of other variations to choose from. They've got the lapis, Louis, or, or whatever it's called. And you've got the marble. I'll bring them up next to me. So you've got an idea of maybe which one's more in keeping with your taste. But guys and girls, as I was saying, please let me know what you think about this watch, more importantly. And uh, maybe any other watches you may want to see on the channel. And as always say, don't forget to like, subscribe, and always watch the time. Take care, guys. All the very best.